What's up? Yo! Hello! Sip YOLO! What's up YouTube? Welcome to the first episode of a new series that I like to call Sapiolo. That stands for support your local. Today, I'm going to be introducing you to one of my very good personal friends, Kevin O'Donnell. Kevin is an artist who really has an extremely unique and original design on all of his art and I'm super excited for you guys to see it. It's nothing like I can explain. His art is so unique that it just begs me to ask more about his life and that's kind of the whole point about this is to expose the people who need it the most. Here we go. Everybody, this is Kevin. Hi. Today we're here with him and all of his art, and yeah. I'm so excited for you guys to all meet him. It's the first time that we've seen each other since high school. High school. That's insane. Okay. Yeah. And so right here we have basically a history of his entire life. And Kevin, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Where are you from? Where did you go to school? Okay. So I was actually, fun fact, I was born in Ukraine. Yeah. When I was three and a half, adopted to an American family, uh, then whole other stuff went into, not gonna get into it, but um, pretty much abusive childhood. Okay. But um, one of the things that really um, kept me together mentally, I guess, was one of the things that, even though my mom was very abusive, she always encouraged me to draw, which was really interesting, considering she was so cold hearted in every other way and okay. aspect. Okay. But, she always said, like, oh, you're getting so good, and I was terrible. I was terrible, but, um... Do you have any pictures to show from when you were terrible? Yes, I do. I have one right here. Isn't that terrible, guys? It's oh disgusting. My but she's very gorgeous. Isn't she? Her name's um, Jalicia. No, it's not. Um, actually, that is a photo I did um, on a folder. Back when I was a little kid, and I didn't have sketchbooks or anything, I used to draw on my folders, and then get yelled at because I wasn't allowed to draw on them, but yeah. So that's one from what I drew on a folder um, in Spanish class, probably third grade or so. Okay. Anyway, so um, yeah, my mom always encouraged me to draw better. She always got me art books, always got me, every Christmas I always got, no matter what, I always got at least one set of something new with art, um, usually drawing stuff or like, you know, notepads because yeah. I used to draw notepads, it's terrible. But then, um, yeah. So, so where where do you find, do you feel like your motivation, your inspiration is like the feeling of your mom then? Or no, where do the, you pull that from? The inspiration changes all the time. Um, obviously the main focus, as you can see, is portraits. I've always been a person who's always been amazed with how you know, I, well, it was all, it kind of started out with, I used to do fashion, I enjoy fashion as a little kid, you know, gay boy, surprise, um, love fashion. Um, like third grade, second grade, I started going, I, I went to an art class um, at uh, CCS and uh, for a summer class. And they pretty much taught me how to do bodies and portraits. So I started doing more portraits. I, you know, mostly it was just girls when I was younger. Then when I went into foster care, um, I branch, tried to branch out into other things because my foster family was kind of like, you know, you need to branch out, do some more things, try maybe draw men or draw kids. And then that is really, when I went into foster care back, uh, it was, I would say 2009 or so, uh, that's when my art really, my, the inspiration for my art really changed. I was from drawing girls all the time in fashion and kind of, you know, whatever, um, to actually having a voice yeah. in my art because I was now trying to draw different things. I was trying to draw still girls, but I was trying to draw shading. I was learning about shading, I was learning about blending, I was learning about color. Um, and you really came a long way with that. I mean, yeah. if you guys can see right here is the beginning of his time and we have just a single color, even though he did yeah. use shading very well in this. Yeah. And then as we move along, we end here and there's so much color. That's honestly one of my favorite pieces on this entire table and it's so exciting to see how far he's come. 
Yeah, it's, uh, I actually did a lot of stuff when I was younger. I wanted to add this too, is that my inspiration really set, you know, set off and when I um, discovered an artist, uh, Sophie Crumb, and she, um, she had a book called Evolution of a Crazy Artist. And I checked it out in my, at my Ferndale library. And I remember that moment still, it was 2011. And I was kind of in a rut with how, you know, drawing and getting inspiration. And she, her art was just so different from what I was used to looking at. She drew nude, you know, risque. Um, and she drew cartoons and realism and landscapes. She could draw everything in this whole book. And it was evolution of her artwork too. And I felt I connected with her through her journey was very similar to mine. I mean, with, with, just, finding it. with just a little bit that I know about her, I'd yeah. say that you guys do have a lot in common because your artwork is very unique unlike anybody's that yeah. I've ever seen. Well, thank and that's you. one of my favorite parts about it is that like, you can't sleep on your local artist. You have to get to know these people. Yeah. And your backstory will help people understand where your art comes from. Which oh is yeah. Why I'm so happy we can do this. And um, so can you tell me a little bit about this one? Okay, so this one, are you going to show a photo of it? Or? Yeah, of course. Okay, so this one is of actually one of my, uh, one of my favorite um, artists of around my age, Troy Sivan, and he's, his album Blue Neighborhood was really inspirational for me getting through time when, a few years ago when I was trying to figure out what it was, what it felt like being a teenager, and I felt Troy Sivan's Blue Neighborhood album really that and so I was I just wanted to draw him one day I was trying to draw him any I, what I like to do sometimes I really like to challenge myself and Troy Savon if you ever seen an actual photo of him he is a very caricatured person with his lips and his eyes for some reason I could never get him correct but that was the closest I ever got to drawing him accurately so that's, that's awesome that one so yeah. who would you say has been your biggest inspiration so far um, definitely Sophie Crumb. Okay. Um, okay. Um, my family, um, my friends. Who's um, your Who's your biggest supporter at this point in your life? My biggest supporter would be Ashley, my pastor. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we. Uh, it's a beautiful story there, but um, he. Uh, we became friends years ago, and through some community service stuff, and. He kind of took me under his wing being a mentor when I didn't really have one. Somebody really just, not even really mentor, just someone just to talk to and who actually has very good insight. He's in his 70s, so okay. he's, uh, but he's one of the smartest people I'll probably ever know. And he, would, every time, we, we still see each other every Thursday at 6 o'clock and we, um, uh, we always look at my art my latest art books, you know, every time, when, before even as we're sitting down, he'll say, all right, let's see the new art. And um, he just loves it. He'll critique it sometimes. He'll say, you know, this maybe this book was a little less colorful, but it's still beautiful. I love this artwork. He'll, he'll, he'll let you know if he doesn't like a piece of art or, he didn't like my um, one eye face. No. When I, I, I used to draw like one eye, which was around this face. I, would only draw one eye, but it was the insecurity. And he helped me realize that it wasn't just I was lazy, it was just I was just insecurity about my art. Wow, okay. But he is one of the biggest supporters. Right here, then, huh? Yes, that is another one where, uh, so that was one of my friends, and she, uh, in college, and uh, I always thought she was really pretty, and I, um, so I drew her. Um, and she saw it, she loved it, I was so happy. Um, it, it always is kind of nerve wracking when you draw people who you know and could instantly message you and say, why did you make me look like a clown, you know? <laughs> so it, so it's a little nerve wracking because like obviously Troy Savant's not gonna call me up tomorrow and be like, dude, that's not what I look like. But someone, you know, can look at uh, you know her and be like, that's not what she looks like. Or her friends could be like, that's not what you look like. Why would he draw you like that? That's the importance of your kind of artist. It's your inspiration and your take. On and how I see that person. Right, right, you know? right. And yeah. also, just sometimes I just messed up. That's what that's it is. Fine. Sometimes, yeah. With that's, artists, the biggest thing is, is yeah, being like okay with making a mistake. And that's one of my biggest problems I find most of the time is just being okay with a mistake. Yeah. And. That's probably one of the things that you deal with the most as oh an artist is because I see you do a lot of work with pen. Yeah. And if you make a mistake with pen, there's no going back. That is the beauty. And 
I actually got inspired to do Ped from Sophie Crumb. Sorry, she's just literally yeah. she's one of the biggest inspirations for going right outside my comfort now. zone. She did sketchbooks, and that's when I started doing sketchbooks. That I was like, well, she keeps them, and you know, she takes them. She says she'd take them everywhere, and I'm like, that's the best way to do it. So I started doing sketchbooks, and um, but she always did pen, and her style of pen work is fucking phenomenal. Sorry, to say. no worries. <laughs> I swear, guys. So, but she is phenomenal, and her pen work and shading technique, and it's just so gorgeous. And I was like, I want to be as amazing as that, or even aspire to be as famous, you know, famous as that type of art. And so, so I do a lot of pen, and luckily, I'm good at it. Yeah. So you are very good at pen work. I love it. And thank um, you. So. Uh, maybe you could, for a second, just yep. go through each phase and talk about a little bit of your life and where you are now. Oh God! Oh, I love I love that one. Okay, because I, I do this a lot because I'm a freak with my art. I look at them and just because I see my art sketchbooks as history in my life. Because most of these sketchbooks, except my latest one, these are all from high school or college. So when I was you're doing, how old now? I'm 21 years old. Only 21. See, she's young, people. <laughs> so anywho, so uh, this book, I was in high school, I would say, I'm pretty sure I was 2014. 2014 was a hectic year. Um, yeah, sorry, I have uh, allergies, guys. So anywho, um, I wasn't in a great time in my life, looking back. Um, I was doing, making a lot of bad decisions in my personal life, um, risky stuff, I, but the only time I could let it out or even just um, forget about the things that I was doing in my life at that time, whether it was you know, feeling like a loner in high school, um, feeling like I had no friends, uh, what no is, social What's life. her name? Uh, this is actually a caricature um, of Sky Ferreira. Okay. And I was obsessed with her album cover for like literally that whole year. So I was constantly drawing her because I loved it so much. But, and music and art really helped me get through high school. Mm -hmm. So when I look at these art books, these earlier ones, it's kind of emotional because I wasn't in a good time. And I was that's very how upset. you were feeling, she, she almost has a, like a disgusted look on her face, like she's not pleased with what's going on, and uh, uh, yeah. I think that tells a lot about where you were too then. Yeah, and you know what's funny is I also drew a lot of the, these, art, these early art books during class. I remember one time I was drawing, I think it was somewhere in one of my older, older even older books, um, my uh, teacher got so mad at me and asked me to do all the math problems on the board because he was mad that I was drawing instead of doing schoolwork. And I got all of them right. And he said, all right, you got all of them right. Let's sit back down. Yeah. He never questioned me about drawing in class again. Good, yeah. So, Seriously. you know, I always encourage people to doodle and sketch during class because it is scientifically proven that you can enhance, you know, your brain activity when you're doing that. I you agree, know? I agree. It keeps you up, you can be focused on what you the other tasks at hand. So and where are so we at this point? This book, um, it was summertime. Summertime when I graduated high school. So I was at a very hectic time at this time too because I was worried about whether I was going to get into college or not. The paperwork was, con they were constantly calling us saying, we don't know if you you know, if he's gonna get there in time, and I, so I was at my, I wasn't, I was not at a good time with my parents, uh, constantly fighting, um, dealing with, uh, you know, a, uh, a lot of emotional turmoil. That's where most art comes from, though, so yeah. um, thank you for sharing that. It is funny because a lot of people do art to let it out. I do it to calm myself down. Okay. I do art so that I can forget about what whatever is going on in my life, and I I because when I'm, I'm drawing, I'm focusing on trying to get that detail in, and trying to you know all this kind of stuff, or trying to get the emotion, you know, the look in my head. I'll be like, oh, I'm, and also, so I'm not even thinking about what's going on in my life. Wow. Okay. You know? Yeah. Um. So let's move on to the next yeah. book. This was during. I, I actually drew this little beauty. Um. 
I'm gonna call her Darla. So Darla was drawn during church. So that's not even a joke. I actually did draw that during church and I drew the nipples and everything during church. And I'm amazed that nobody looked at me because I go to Zion Lutheran and there's a lot of older people, elderly people, you know, sitting around you when you're drawing Darla. And uh, I remember I would, I would always draw during church because I hated church. I was always bored by it. But obviously, Pastor Paul was great, you know, loved his sermons. But I would always draw actually during his sermons, I think, to help me understand what he was saying during the sermon. And I so. applaud your bravery because in church, it's funny that church kind of brought that out of you to yeah. draw that. Because when you think about art in the past and uh -huh. like way back when in the medieval times and all of that, nudity was regular it was it was looked at as beauty and right. um admired and so like the fact that you drew that in church and church brought that out of you just that yeah. purity that's that's really incredible thank you yeah i love it and so how about how long does it take you to get through one book uh it depends on how emotionally unstable i am okay <laughs> <laughs> i literally um, how emotionally available I am. Um, so this book, I would say, probably took maybe if like a month or so. So I feel like the older I've gotten, the longer they've taken because life happens. You know, I'm 21 now, working on working, living on my own, pay my own bills and all that, and it's just I just don't mentally have time anymore. I really am trying to though. But so this one took like only a few months. You know maybe two months at most, because I draw mostly during class. And I, I'm sure many of my teachers will watch this and be like, yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. He sometimes would even draw instead of doing his work. Yes, I did, but look how beautiful it is. Yeah, look at your passion, um, it really came out. Yeah, so this one took a little longer. I do remember this one took about maybe three months. Wow, so, okay. But, so the fourth yeah. book? This one, I love this drawing, I just want to say. This is one of, I think, to me, one of the most beautiful drawings I've ever done. It's of, one of my favorite artists at the time, Paloma Faith. Um, she needs to get it together. These new, these two new albums she's created are terrible. But I love her anyway. It's a gorgeous picture though. Thank you. Yeah. This is a, um, a photo of her in the recording studio. One thing I love to show, I guess, or is um, the normalness of being famous and because when you're in the studio as a singer singers are famous because they are famous at what they do which is expressing themselves right. and being a diary and letting out the diary to everyone oh, yeah. and so it's a very emotional vulnerable thing to do so i so i thought to myself what is the most vulnerable place to do that the recording studio when you're writing it when you're expressing it when you're saying the words out loud for the first time right. and so i'm like so i really want to express that in this drawing um because she has a lot of emotional music i think you captured that very well you know um thank so you moving on to the most recent points most in your life recent. so this is a very um I'll try it, make it brief, because um, this is a very emotional one, because this is the first book I've ever done where I wasn't on Concerta, and because I, I was an addict for a few, a few years on my, my uh, Concerta, and I don't know if I can talk about it, I, mean, I don't know how YouTube will feel about that, or my parents, but honestly, I, you know, I'm an adult, I can say it, I, I wouldn't say I was an addict addict, like, you know, I, I overcame the addiction. Good, yeah. So, you know, if I went back on it, I don't think I would be addicted to it. But I would never do it again. That's smart. I would, I would never take it again. Yeah, you don't I, need it. I mean, you I don't. Look, at, look at how far you've come without it. Without that's, it. That's amazing. This is one of my best books, yeah. honestly. One of my personal favorite, not just because it's my first sober book, but um, very disturbing but sad fact is that all these other books, I was an addict. So I would take a lot of pills to make my art better because, you know, I feel like artists are the most insecure, insecure people because we constantly are drawing stuff to not only impress you, but to impress ourselves. I, I'm not saying all artists are like that, but I, me definitely, the, that's the how the I am. The best ones are because then it really comes out of passion and just like yeah. 
the need. It's, it's a need. It's not the. It's 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 for the right need, not the wrong need. It's because when I was doing drugs, thing. I was I, I was doing it because I needed to do something good. I needed to feel better about myself. I was living. I was in a bad world, the worst times of my life. You know, a year ago, mm-hmm. and I was just. I was drawing great stuff. I'll show you a picture right here. So great stuff, but I was an addict. I was taking Concerta three sometimes at a time. And you know, looking back, I'm much more proud of this than that. And I'm very happy to see that yeah. you are sober and doing well. Thank you. And no harm came to yourself. You look yeah. great. Thank you. Yeah. That's what a lot of people are saying. Yeah. Like, oh my god, I've gained 50 pounds. <laughs> You're healthy, man. That's the best part. You know, Thank you. When drugs like yeah, that right. force you not to eat because you get distracted by other things. Exactly. Like that it. was that. That was one of the big things about it. Yeah, can't eat. I'm drawing. So that's <laughs> how I felt. You know, when people be like, you know. But um, yeah, that's one of my most proudest books. And I another thing I had to say is I can never sell any of these. So I don't know if people would ever ask. I don't. Just in case, I I would never sell any of these. And on the other hand, everything is always for sale for the right price. I'll just say that. Um, Fourteen hundred dollars and fifty-eight cents. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much thank for you. sharing. Um, I'm glad that we got to have this time yeah, together. Yeah, me too. And this so is fun. Be, before we go yes. and anything like that, wow. I would love to ask you if you would draw something for us today. Oh my God! Yes, I would love yes. that. Yes, let's do that. All right. We're going to have him draw something for us. One second. Okay, so I'm going to draw. This is literally what happens sometimes when I try to do, like, out of my head. And we're just going to go with shapes. It usually starts with, like, a shape. So I'm just doing the eye right now. She is beauty and she is grace. Who is she? She's Miss United Can. Because she belongs in a can. Yeah, so as you guys can see, um, she's, uh, she's had some lace front problems, obviously. So, we're just going to try to make her look as gorgeous as she can with not the 99 cents that we spent on her. I'm kidding. By the way, guys, these are with Crayola. Um, shout out to Crayola. They actually... These are really nice. I'm very impressed with Crayola. Okay. Because I do want her to like, you know, there we go. I like to do these feet sometimes. And then, um, yeah. Yes, come on. She's got a heart, guys. Okay. personal friend Kevin here. Hi! Make sure that you guys follow him on Instagram at KevinNivik2396. Perfect, alright. We'll see you guys next time. Hang loose. Yeah!